Okay, for those of you who are wondering why you couldn't hear me, it's because I, I was just not really using my real voice. I was just moving my lips. But now I'm just going to bring you in and, and welcome you. It's good that you're here. Uh, in that countdown video, you'd be interested in knowing how many of you uh, made 100 on all those questions. Of course, we did that little thing just to help your children maybe be able to engage uh, a little bit easier as we get ready to go here today. So some quick announcements related to things going on. You probably received a series of texts. There were, I think, three in that uh, little series of texts here on Friday about some supplies that were needed by our Threadbearers Ministry. Um, they have kind of engaged our national need for face masks, and they are um, making those and sewing those, and, and they, they're in need of some materials. And we listed some things that uh, Miss Hazel Mullis had had put out a call for. So. I just wanted to clarify on that. Uh, they need those things. We're not asking you to necessarily leave your house and go shopping because our government's kind of asked us to stay away from that, if at all possible. Um, I guess what Hazel is asking is if you have sewing materials, maybe you have some of your grandmother's stuff uh, that came to you, look through there for those items. If you're not sure what those items would look like or exactly what they need, give Miss Hazel a call. And uh, she'll be glad to clarify you on that. We had a couple of people who contacted the office wanting to know, can, can we give money to help with this? And um, that that really wouldn't be a great help. We the, these these uh, our folks they need the actual materials, and so we're just asking you to look around your house, in your closets, if you have any of those kind of things. If you're not exactly sure, call Miss Hazel. That that would be great. Okay, uh, Jeff and I had the opportunity to sharing a live webinar with our governor and uh, where he was discussing his uh, latest uh, proclamations related to uh, sheltering at home and what could and could not be done. And his assistant was there to answer a lot of questions. And it, it was pretty informative. It lasted about an hour, a little, a little longer than an hour. So um, there's not a lot that we're going to need to change. Uh, the one probably big change that we'll be making, well, we're still going to have people here in the office uh, during the weekdays. Hours are a little bit shortened, uh, but for the most part, we're here uh, at least up till 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And that's mainly so that when you need something and you call, there'll be a, a human voice here to say, Hey, how are you doing? What, what can we help you with? Um, but we're going to start keeping the, the door locked so that people just can't come in and out. And just really trying to cut back a little bit on on all this, um, uh, all the different ways that uh, this thing can be transmitted. And uh, so there you go. So if you're, you come to the office, uh, we'll speak to you at the door and then kind of determine what we need to do from there. It's not like we're trying to keep people out. We're just trying to uh, really offer um, some safety to uh, our people who are in the office. So um, there you go. There's that. Um, now, let me say a word to you about preparation for communion next Sunday. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday. And I heard uh, somebody in the news media made a comment that this will be the first time in forever that the church has not celebrated Easter. And I sat up and I said, oh, oh no, 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 you're wrong. We're celebrating Easter. It's just going to be celebrated a little bit differently. I just thought we are going to talk about Palm Sunday here in a few minutes. And one of the things that we're going to do together right here in your living room, kitchen, dining room, wherever, den, wherever you're watching this, and, and those of us here in the office, we're going to share uh, communion together. And so let me give you some quick, just it's, it's, it, there's not a lot of preparation you need to make on your part, except uh, to have either pieces of bread or one big piece of bread that your different family people can Take a piece, tear a piece off of, however you choose to do that. And then maybe a, a, a goblet or a cup or some kind of thing that each family member can, can drink from when we come to that part of communion. So we'll be talking about the body of Christ and then we'll all share together as we eat uh, that bread in, in remembrance of Christ. And then we're going to talk about what that juice represents and what it's symbolic of. And then we'll all be sharing in uh in in that part of the communion so that's next sunday morning so you know however you want to do that and let me say, uh, give a shout out to all the dads 
uh, that are listening in their homes. This is a great opportunity for you to lead in worship, for you to lead in that moment of communion. Uh, God's kind of uh, laid it out in Scripture that men are the spiritual heads of their homes, and this is a great opportunity for you to do that. And also, in all of these, to lead your family in prayer and to help them know how we're going to do this, maybe asking other people to pray. Uh, but it's a great thing. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, we'll be doing uh, communion together uh, through the airwaves. Um, okay, so I, th I think, oh, one other announcement. Uh, immediately after this is finished this morning, we will be again posting another video to uh, our Facebook page and YouTube page that is just for children. Um, some things that they can give themselves to and watch. You might want to watch with them. Uh, we appreciate the McCorders uh, making that possible. And that'll be going up right after the conclusion of this service. So I think that's all I really wanted to share by way of announcements. Um, so now let's kind of get in. Let's kind of set our hearts uh, for cyber worship, for coming um, into the presence of God. So I want to lead us in a prayer first, okay? Let's pray. Father God, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. And we so need to connect with you as we connect with other members of our church family. Father, I pray you would pour into us during our time together this morning. And Father, whatever the need of our heart is today, whether it's encouragement, whether it's wisdom, Father, it may be conviction. You, maybe we're not paying attention to you in some area of our life. Father, I pray that you would be at work during these moments to just accomplish your purposes. Father, I pray that as we sit in the more relaxed comfort of our homes um, during this time of worship, that we would not be relaxed in our focus on who you are. And uh, I, I pray, Father, by your Holy Spirit connecting us all, that our, our hearts and minds and ears would be sharpened to just give ourselves fully to this moment uh, that we share in worship this morning. We give it all to you as an offering, and it's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Of who God is and who we are in Christ. So here we go. Let's keep talking about some stuff. Okay, now, uh, the first thing I want to throw out there is uh, a social distancing verse, okay? Now, if I own, like, a t-shirt company, uh, I would probably take this and run with it as far as just uh, putting some words of encouragement out there and whatnot. But I'm going to show you that social distancing verse from Scripture, and it's actually in the book of Ecclesiastes. It's the second part of verse 5, and the Bible tells us that there is a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. There you go. Speaking right to what we're going through. So we are right now in a time of refraining from embracing, and it's frustrating us. I had an opportunity to uh, be in the hospital uh, when Miss Quinnon passed away. And I was standing outside. I couldn't get in, obviously. And um, Elena uh, Dykes came out just after Miss Quinnon had passed away to to share that with me, and well, I saw her coming, and we both went like we were fixing to hug, and then it hit us, ah, oh, we can't do that, and we backed up, and it was so frustrating, but this is a time when we're, we're refraining from embracing, and it's uh, kind of challenging, but there's a reason for it, and um, if, if, you're, if you think it's like overkill, um, you need to like maybe check out what's going on down in Albany. Uh, you, you might want to read the history. They've kind of figured out how that whole thing down there in the Albany area got started, and it actually kind of started out at a funeral home uh, receiving uh, type thing where someone who was infected was there, and it just kind of grew from that. And so we're just trying to be wise about what we do. But if you're wondering uh, about the value of quarantine, uh, go to Leviticus chapters 13 through 15, uh, for instance, and read what God says to his own people, the nation of Israel, about when there's someone with an infection or disease uh, that there needs to be this period of time or that period of time where they are placed outside the camp. In other words, they're placed in quarantine. And then after a period of time, they can be checked. And if that disease is gone, that infection is gone, they can come back in. If not, then it's to be extended. There's even a couple of instances where 
They even have, uh, God lays out some rules about how you check out a house and make sure the house is germ-free, disease-free. And if over a period of time it cannot be established to be germ-free, God says, tear it down, tear the house down. So even God, when he was looking out for his people, the, the, uh, the Israelites, uh, there were those instances where he said, you know what, when, you, when there's a, an infectious kind of thing going on, you have to be really careful about that and act accordingly. So um, a time to refrain from embracing, that's kind of what we're in. Let me just encourage you with a couple of thoughts, if I can. Uh, some, some by way of instruction and, um, and then one by way of encouragement. I, I want to encourage you to really avoid um, getting caught up in conspiracy theories. It's amazing to me the stuff that's flying around on the internet about uh, about this virus and about the infection and about whose fault it is because we love to play the blame game when something's going on that we don't fully understand. We want to put it on somebody and, and uh, blame them for it, whether it's government, whether it's uh, a foreign entity, uh, whoever, whatever it might be. And, and that stuff just, just, just isn't good. It, it really isn't. And um, I would encourage you to... There's so many what ifs that we could put out there, but there just are no answers for those right now. And uh, I mean, you can find you can find an article that addresses any fear that you have, and can just make it explode. Don't don't feed your anxiety. Be informed, but be well informed. Really check out your sources, and. Um, and, and I'm just praying for you that, that you would just recognize what we're in. And uh, we're in a health crisis. We have a virus that's uh, pretty infectious and spreads quickly. Uh, it's going to get better. I promise you that. It's going to get better. Um, but uh, don't, don't, don't feed those fears and feed that anxiety. Really focus and anchor your heart on the sovereignty of God, the peace of God, the presence of God and the all-knowingness of God. He knows all those details that you and I can't get our mind around. Uh, let me also throw one other thing out there real quick. Okay, uh, there there are a fair number of people, uh, many of them um, pastors uh, of different churches, different denominations, whoever it might be, that are really wanting to take this situation we're in with the coronavirus and uh, turn it into a um, a God's judgment on the world kind of thing. And that really doesn't fit the testimony of Scripture. I mean, stop and think about it. If this is God's judgment on the world, then who, who's he judging? Uh, because I, I know a lot of Christian people who have gotten sick. And I'm like, you know, God's a pretty specific God. If he was... Judging would is he just like is this just like a blanket judgment? And whoever the judgment falls on, then learn your lesson or or what? Um, and if really this is God's judgment, then I'm not sure why we would need to celebrate Easter because I think the Bible teaches that the crucifixion of Christ was God's judgment on the sin of humanity. And so now we live in this period where we can, by the mercy and grace of God, respond uh, to this gift of, of salvation through Jesus Christ. And that judgment will fall on those who reject the gift of Christ, but that judgment is to come. And, I, you know, I, I, we're not going to go into a Bible study on it, but I just, I just want to encourage you in that. I, you know, I, that probably gets a lot of airtime, that, that idea about this is God judging our messed up world. Our world's been messed up for a long time, like ever since the Garden of Eden. And if you're a student of history, and I don't mean just recent history, but way back history, um, as bad as we see our culture and a lot of things going on in our culture, man, go back to Rome during the, the, the period of Caligula and look what was going on in Rome during that time. And you might could look at that and think, you know, that's when God should have brought everything to a stop. But um, so I don't know this is God's judgment. Is God using this to get people's attention? I have no doubt that he is. Just as Satan is trying to leverage this situation to bring people into bondage to fear and anxiety. Um, 
but that's kind of where we are on that. So let me let me let me kind of go right here with uh, a positive word. You know, we talk about life happens when life is happening, and so we got a lot we got a lot of things going on, a lot of news articles, and and everybody's got their idea, and there's all kind of different models coming up. I looked at a model just this morning, about six o'clock. I was here in the office, and a new model has been released. It shows what the peak day is going to be in each state related to the number of people infected and and what it looks like is going to be the total number of deaths per state and i was i was looking through that and i thought wow just wow um just be really careful i'm not saying it's right or wrong i'm just like uh, i looked at it i studied it of course i went to the state of georgia and then i closed it down i said okay you know although all that is guesswork and i would rather trust someone who already knows the answers, his name is God, uh, than somebody's model of what might happen. Um, so in the middle of all these things, and, and then real life is happening while real life is happening, let's remember uh, what Jesus told us in Matthew 6. In verse 33, that's that great verse about seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. In other words, make your relationship with God the priority in your life. Heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. Pursue God. And then in verse 34, we don't quote verse 34 uh, as often as we do verse 33, but in verse 34, Jesus went on to say, so don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. That's, that's pretty solid. Don't worry about tomorrow. It's going to get here, and it's, it's going to have its own stuff to worry about. Uh, today's trouble is enough for today. So I, I want to encourage you, live one day at a time. Make the most of today. Uh, give yourself to this day. How can you live your life in a way that brings honor to God, in a way that strengthens your family, uh, in a way that uh, displays your faith one day at a time? Don't worry down the road too much. Uh, God's already down the road, and uh, we'll experience him as we get there. Uh, talking about life happening while life is happening, I want to ask you, especially in your personal prayer time, private prayer time, to pray for Miss Nellie Peacock. She's going through a rough time. Been trying to get her back into swing bed here in Bleckley, but haven't been able to do that yet. Um, she's got some issues with her uh, uh, blood work and other things are trying to get leveled out up there in Macon. And of course, it's, uh, you know, family is restricted from being able to visit. It's, it's a tough time to have somebody you love in the hospital. But but uh, for the most part, from what I've heard from her son, Miss Nellie's uh, spirits are pretty good. She's always uh, had an upbeat way of looking at life. So keep Miss Nellie in your prayers. Uh, Mr. Jackie Bowen's father uh, had to be admitted to the hospital, and uh, his health has been failing. Pray for Jackie, for Jackie's father, for that family. Don Giles, his father, continues um, to be at a, um, a weakening uh, time in his life. So we pray for Don. And, and there's a lot of things. I'm not trying to name every prayer need our church family has. That's why we've been sending out the prayer list every week, but just some things to highlight that, you know, we just got people. We got uh, Miss Quinnon's family. Uh, they, they've, they've, they've had that funeral service now, and so now they're in those early days of grieving and kind of having to walk through what's next and uh, what's this going to look like and what do we do. I uh, continue to pray for uh, the Dykes family. Uh, just a shout out, real quick. I think I've mentioned this once before. Our students, uh, under Jamie's direction, have been um, putting together their own devotional clips. They're not real long. They're posted on our YouTube student ministry channel, and I enjoy watching those. And so I'm just going to tell you, and they're posting every day. And so if you just want to see a face of one of our students and hear some wisdom from one of our students, uh, find that channel YouTube on YouTube, FBC Student Ministry, and you can watch uh, those video devotional slash testimonials every day. And uh, to all of uh, our students who are making those, I'm proud of you. That's great. Thank you for wearing your faith and getting out there and uh, being willing to put it um, in front of everybody. Uh, there's, there's so many, there's so many like, really cool things we can do, great ideas. I would encourage you to follow those. We've asked some of you to, if you have children or grandchildren, if you want to do it yourself, grown-up people, if you want to make some kind of music video, sharing a song that we can use on some of these broadcasts, We'd love for you to, and if you're kind of sitting there waiting for us to ask you personally, we don't know who to ask. But uh, everybody I've talked to, they, they really love it. The songs we listened to, like the one just now or a few minutes ago about Whom Shall I Fear, those are great, and they speak to us. 
man, there's something about seeing a face you recognize, whether it's a child or an adult, uh, sharing a song. And um, you can just uh, send those right here to us, email it or, or text a, a video here to the church. It'd be a great thing. Uh, I did notice that somebody took it upon themselves to go around town and leave little sticky notes on the, the doors of local businesses uh, after hours so that when these people came into work the next day, they were greeted by these little sticky notes that basically were notes of encouragement, praying for you, thank you for what you're doing in the community. And I thought, what a great way to spread some joy. And so I would encourage you, your family, uh, to think of, think of ways. How can, we, how can we engage our community? How can we show our faith and our support uh, while at the same time uh, observing uh, these uh, stay at home and social distancing guidelines. Pretty cool. So there you go. Um, <clears throat> life happens while life is happening. I don't know what all is going on in your life, uh, but I want you to know God knows what's going on, and I pray that you will um, that you will be there and uh, and see God in the middle of all that. Okay, we have some people here that I want to shout out to. These are people who are watching. And I don't know about this morning. I hadn't looked at this list yet. You're going to hear it just as soon as uh, I read it, and that'll be the first time I've seen it. But I can tell you this, that almost every time we're together and we kind of think of ourselves as First Baptist Church and when we and our First Baptist uh, cyber worship, we just, that's what it is. And the majority of us that are uh, tuned in today are members here or people who attend or worship here from our community, which is great. It's just great. But I want you to know that we, every time we're together, we actually have people from Virginia that are watching every week and North Carolina that are watching and Mississippi and California and, and other places. It's amazing how God is taking uh, this little cyber church meeting from this little town in Cochrane and uh, using it to minister to and speak to the hearts of people uh, that don't live anywhere here in our community. I think it's a pretty cool thing. It's the power of technology. So here are some of the people that are sharing with us today. I have the list right here. Can you see it? There it is, right here in my hand. And um, so uh, I see that Pebble Pittman and crew and Nana are all with us today. Uh, Pebbles, were you listening earlier when I talked about if I was somebody who had a t-shirt? Anyway, uh, yeah, maybe you were. Um, uh, I see my wife is logged in today. That's great. Lee Dykes, and I would imagine his family, Lisa Crosby. Lisa, I keep meaning to send you a text, and I, I just don't get around to it, so now I'm going to do it on live worship. If you could redo that video of your girl, our people would love to see and hear your girl sing. We could not get that video very clear. So if you can redo that video and send it to us, we'd appreciate it. There you go. Uh, Denise and James Bryant. James been having some uh, back issues. I hope they're better today. James, we're praying for you. Jennifer Kitchens. Hey, Jennifer. How you doing? Doing good? Yeah. Good to see you. Good to be with you. Carla Coley, Donna Smith, uh, Robin and Charlie Porter. Good to have you all with us. Amanda. Amanda Sellers. Amanda, does that mean Tyler's not at church with you? Or is he there on your account? We're going to trust that he's sitting there with you. Uh, Alan and Sanja, it's good to see y'all. The Trey Bellflowers, Ron and Flora Bryant, Andy and Andrea Williams. Hey, good to have y'all with us today. Uh, Paige Bags, uh, Clyde Evans, uh, Susan Brooks. Hey, hey, Susan. Susan is a friend of mine from high school. Y'all don't know her. That's one of those. She's up in uh, Habersham County, North Georgia area. And um, good to see you, Susan. Looking good today. All right. Uh, the Jason Littles, Dawn Jump, Leanna Noah. The Heather Davises, uh, Lauren Chuck Little, Tommy and Judy Porter, Emmy Meadows. Hey, Emmy, you still virus free since I gave you that treatment the other day? If you need another one, stop by sometime. Be glad to scare the virus out of you again. Uh, Billy Ann Barnett, uh, Jennifer Bowen, Dwayne Fernandez, uh, Sheila Buffy Buff. Hey, Sheila, how you doing? Yeah, yeah, glad you could join us. Kathy Bowden is with us today. The Shane Savants, Brittany Lucas, Tanya Dean. Um, the Kletkeys and Ross Bennett and Diane Lawson, Danette Rogers. There's just so many people here. I wish I could read them all. We don't have time to do that. Uh, Scott and Beverly Moore, it's good to see y'all with us today. Uh, Vicki Speck, uh, I'm guessing Quinn is with you. I hope Quinn is able to be with you. Quinn, I hope your, your uh, therapy and uh, recovery there with your um, 
knee is getting better and better. Um, Miss Glenda Davis, Ramona and Don Giles, Donna mentioned you earlier. We continue to pray for you. Uh, the Sasters are here. Miss Mary Davidson, um, Mary and Gerald, Millie Oliver. Millie's with us. Millie's good to see you. Um, <clears throat> Sue Sanders and Angie Rustin and Bubba and Kathy Paul, Ben Tyus and Faye, uh, Sierra Warren, Dennis Phillips is with us. Just a, a whole bunch of different people, and there may even be others that have that we just hadn't, didn't have time to write down their name before we got to this part of our show. The cool thing about that is that we're we're all connected. Uh, I can't see you. All of you can see me. Um, and um, but but we are all here with one purpose. And that's the coolest thing in the world. And it is an honor of mine to be able to share this space in the cyber world with you today. That's a great song. And I hope it spoke to your heart. Now, you're not. You can't see my face right now. That's uh, by design because. We're going to spend a little bit of time uh, in doing some directed praying, and we're going to do it a little different. We 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 tried it one way, and uh, of course, our Wednesday night we had the little bell with us, and uh, that's pretty cool. But what we're going to do? I'm just going to leave this screen up here for the next few minutes, praying together, and I'm going to invite you uh, there in 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 your home, wherever you're listening, whether you're by yourself, whether you're with other people. Um, to all of us out here in the cyber world, lift up some prayer for for some specific um, uh, requests that, that I'll share with you as we kind of go through. Kind of like we were doing with the uh, slides before. We're just going to do it um, verbally now. And uh, if, if you're with a group of people, um, it'd be great if you join hands. And I do ask that at least that one person pray out loud. If you've got more than one person there in your group, if you just kind of want to go around each time I share a request and then that person uh, pray specifically for that need. But uh, so if you you join hands, uh, kneel, to get, kneel down together if you want to kneel as a family, that's a pretty cool thing to do. Um, <clears throat> but I'm going to start our prayer and then I'm just going to name some things and, and we'll be silent while you as a family pray for some of these and uh, then we're going to close it out together, and I'll show you how we do that when we get to it. So let's pray together. Father, we come to you uh, right now to just lift some things up. Father, we know there's nothing uh, that we can tell you or inform you about that you don't already know. It's, it's, it's not like we want to make sure you're aware of this or aware of that. Father, we're just joining our hearts and voices with the hearts and voices of so many other people that are just crying out to you. Uh, that we might see your hand at work, that we might uh, see your healing at work, that we might see your glory in, in how you bring our nation uh, through this crisis with this virus. And so all the prayers we lift up, Father, it's, it's not because in any way we consider ourselves deserving or worthy that you would be at work in our life. Father, we, we bring them to you because we know you love us. We, you love us because of who you are. Your love for us is incredible. And, um, and, and we just come lifting these things up as an expression of our trust in you. So right there in your home right now, the first thing I'd like for you to pray for are all those who are currently sick with this virus and for the families who have lost a loved one to this virus. You pray together in your family now. As we continue to pray, I want to invite you to voice a prayer on behalf of all of our frontline warriors. And I don't know what else to call them, medical people and research people and those in the service industries that are going to work every day and, and, and National Guard people being called in. Um, pray for all the frontline warriors right now.
continuing in prayer. Let's pray for our national leaders, state leaders, local leaders, uh, the, the people tasked with making decisions, uh, interpreting all the data and all the stuff related to what our nation is going through. Let's pray for them that they would know the incredible wisdom um, of our God in their hearts and minds. Continuing in prayer, um, it's a little bit different. Uh, we have on our prayer list right here at the church four different couples who are expecting the arrival of a baby uh, next month. And uh, there's got to be a lot of anxiety there about all that's going on in these new babies. And, and then I, I start thinking about all the, all the mothers uh, around this world that right now are anticipating very soon the birth of a baby. So... Uh, for those of us here in Cochran, praying for these four uh, who uh, prepare to bring babies into this world and to many other mothers to be, we just pray for them that they would know the peace of God. Okay, let's let, let's just let's just express our heart's desire for the glory of God to be revealed and magnified and, and seen in our nation and in our world by how he works in and through these circumstances. And then the last of our specific things we're praying for together, joining our hearts and voices uh, together. Let's, let's pray for the people that we know. Maybe it's a friend of yours. Maybe it's somebody in your family. Maybe it's somebody you work with. Maybe it's a neighbor. Let's pray for the people around us who do not know Jesus, who don't know that God really is alive, and who are looking for answers and looking for hope. Let's pray for the people that we know who are lost spiritually, uh, that during this thing, this crisis, they might find their way uh, to Jesus. Okay, um, it's amazing that God has heard every one of your prayers, and he's already at work in our prayers. It's, it's not like he's, ooh, i got to jump on that. He's already at work. We're just, we're just connecting with what God's, God's doing and where he's doing it, and we, we just want to share in that, be his hands and feet. So what we're going to do today, we're still going to close together uh, saying that prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Come on in, guys. Uh, the Lord's Prayer. 
And so this is kind of what I'd like for us to do. I want us all praying this thing out loud right there in your home, wherever you are. Uh, Jeff and uh, Russell have just walked in here into the office, and I'm fixing to cut to a live view there. We're going to be praying out loud with you. We're going to join our hearts together and close with this uh, beautiful prayer uh, that was given to us by Jesus. And so if you're joining hands with somebody, we're going to join hands right here. Yeah, okay. And uh, let's pray together. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Hey, there's Russell. Jeff, wave. There's Jeff. You see Jeff? These guys are the ones that actually make this happen. I just sit in there and do what they tell me to do. So we're fixing to get into a little bit of Bible study, and I think to just kind of really make sure our hearts are focused and ready to go, I want you right, right there where you are, whether you're by yourself, whether you're with your family, whatever it might be. Uh, we shared this song the last time we were together. It's a powerful, powerful song. Uh, put together by a group of people who are quarantined, who are sheltering in place, but they wanted to just join their voices together. And so it's kind of the um, special music leading into our Bible study. Uh, just kind of sit back, let this wash over you, lift your voice up, sing with it. However you want to respond, you get your worship on right there, okay? <sighs>
And so much in our church is about music and old music and new music. And man, that song we just listened to is one of those that reaches across the generations. It's powerful uh, in all of our lives. Yes. And so anyway, I thought we had a technical issue there. So, I, you know, that's one of those songs. Is with my soul. I, you know, I'll be tempted to actually play that every time uh, we're broadcasting. I don't know that we will, but that's how powerful it is. And I hope that it spoke to your heart. So today is Palm Sunday, and we're going to focus on that. Uh, we're going to talk about it. We're going to look at uh, Matthew's account of Palm Sunday. It's actually in John's account that we're told the branches they were cutting were palm branches, but we're going to look in, uh, in Matthew's account of that same event. Palm Sunday is such... It's... It's a, it's a day that we recognize and we, we celebrate in the church. But if you, if you, if you look at Palm Sunday in the, in the context of the, the whole Passion Week and, and, and where we end up on Friday, uh, just a few days from now in the historical sense, and then as we think back on it, uh, in a lot of ways, Palm Sunday is kind of a, a disturbing day. Uh, looking at it, from a historical viewpoint, uh, starts out strong. And it's, it's like, wow, this is, this is a great thing. It's a powerful thing. And uh, I don't know. We're going to talk about that a little bit today. But Palm Sunday, uh, we're going to first read. i got to put my glasses on so that I can see. The uh, We're going to be in Matthew chapter 21. We're going to be uh, reading those first 11 verses and I might say if, uh, stop here and there and make one or two comments, but uh, for the most part, we're going to read straight through it. So if you have a Bible, and I hope you do, um, I'll give you about 10 seconds to get one. If you don't, or get your phone out, if you use your, your phone or, or other device uh, for Scripture. But it's good to have it right there in front of you. Uh, Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. And so when they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus then sent two disciples telling them, uh, following Jesus, and let me say it, following Jesus is an incredible adventure, okay? If we're really walking by faith with Christ, uh, we really begin to uh, realize that there's no telling what's next. When we're walking by faith with Christ, because he is he's so far ahead of us, because he sees all things from start to finish, that there's just this is an incredible it's an incredible adventure uh to walk with him so here he is and so he looks at two of his disciples okay and he tells them go into the village ahead of you so so go on run on run on go on to the village and at once you will find a donkey tied there and a colt with her i tie them and bring them to me and if anyone says anything to you you should say that the Lord needs them, and immediately 
he will send them. When, when you walk with Jesus, life is an adventure. I, I try to put myself in the place of these two disciples. I'm like, uh, seriously? I'm just going to walk up and start walking off with somebody's animal. These were, these were precious commodities, uh, way more so in biblical times. And then Jesus says, just explain that the Savior has need of these. I'm in this. Guys, just trust me. It'll work just like I'm telling you. And, and he sent them away. Now, we're not going to talk a lot about the virus there in Bible study, but I do want to say this one thing. You know, there are a lot of people kind of like, ah, how's this going to work out? What's God going to do? Okay, I just want you to know God's got it under control. Look, if he knows where the donkey's going to be for, for Palm Sunday, he, he, knows, he, he knows what needs to be done and what's going to be done and where the answers are going to be found, whether it's through his miraculous intervention, whether it's through research, whatever it might be. God's already got those details taken care of. He's that kind of God, just like we see right here at the beginning of the account of Palm Sunday. So all of this took place. I'm back in verse 4 now. This took place so that what was spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Tell daughter Zion, see, your king is coming to you, gentle, mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. So here we have Palm Sunday and, and, and Jesus uh, coming into Jerusalem and the way he comes in uh, is consistent with what is prophesied in the Old Testament. This is one of the things I love about the Bible is that the Bible is the best commentary on itself. And when you just kind of bring all the pieces together, it's just this incredible mosaic of what God is doing as he writes his story across humanity. So verse 6, So the disciples went did just as Jesus directed them, and they, they brought the donkey and the colt. Then they laid their robes on them, and, and he sat on them. And a very large crowd, a very large crowd spread their robes on the road, others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them on the road. There's that, the palm branches part of that. Now, I, I'm just going to say a quick word here as well. The, we have no way of knowing who made this crowd, uh, what the composition or the demographics of this crowd were. But I can take a pretty good guess. And, and I can take a pretty good guess because... On most Sundays, outside of when we're in quarantine and, and, and social um, separation due to a virus crisis, most Sundays I'm, I'm in a pulpit somewhere and I'm looking out at a crowd of people. And I know that among, in that crowd of people, there, there, there are people there for all kinds of different reasons. Uh, there are people who have come to church to, to, to genuinely, as best they know how, bring themselves as an offering of worship to Christ. There are those in church on almost any given Sunday who are there because it is a social thing to do. It is a good place to be seen. It is a way to connect with friends. And so their primary purpose in coming to church and doing church is to connect with other people, to renew friendships, to exchange news, whatever it might be. Um, there are people who show up in church on, on, a, on a pretty regular basis because they believe that is the condition of their salvation, that they come to church more than they don't come to church. In any, in any service that I stand up, whether it's here or whatever church or whatever auditorium I be speaking in, that crowd is made up of a lot of different people with a lot of different agendas and a lot of different motivations, and I'm sure this crowd was the same. I'm sure there were people here who absolutely adored Jesus and would follow him no matter the cost. But I'm also just as certain there were people in this crowd laying down these palm branches and laying down their articles of clothing who were there not so much because they fully believed that Jesus was the Messiah, but they had, they, they had a friend who was healed of blindness by this dude. And if he can heal blind people, I'm going to show up because this, this, this show is worth attending. There, there's no telling the people that were in this crowd. We just know there was a large crowd uh, on this Palm Sunday. So the crowds went ahead of him, and those who followed kept shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. They, they were proclaiming him the, the, as the messianic fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy about the Son of David. 
So verse 10, when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken, saying, who is this? And the crowds kept saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Okay, we're going to stop right there. That's the that's Matthew's account of what what is the first big event on Palm Sunday. There were some things to come after, and I'm going to reference those in, in just a minute. But I, I want us to think about this Palm Sunday. I want us to think about Jesus Christ, the Son of God in the flesh, God wrapped in the skin of humanity, is is now come is coming into the the final week of his earthly ministry, and um, and so one of the ways I think about Palm Sunday, if I can use something from uh, from like that's kind of a hot thing right now in culture uh, or in some parts parts of culture, it's a this is idea of the big reveal. You know, here for the last year or two, it's like uh, new parents have tried to outwork themselves in coming up with some kind of creative way to do a gender reveal. Uh, and they invite a bunch of people. It's like a big party. And then there's that moment in the party where through some device, and I, you've seen them too. You've seen the videos. You've, you've, you've maybe even attended some of these. I attended one reveal party where they, they had a uh, race car driver who brought his car and he had it out there and he revved it up and they had added something into the fuel or the carburetor. I'm not sure how they did it. And, and so as he began to rev, all of a sudden, you know, blue smoke came flying out the back of the car. And it was like, ah, it's a boy, you know, reveal parties. And, um, and one of the things that strikes me about Palm Sunday, about what this kicks off, this, this, this entrance into Jerusalem, knowing we're just a week away from the crucifixion of Christ. This is, this is God's big reveal uh, to, to the whole world, not just to the crowds and to, to Jerusalem, but through scripture to us. Uh, this is God's big reveal of who Jesus is. I mean, think back, think back to the ministry of Jesus. Think about how many times, like um, after he performed a miracle in somebody's life, he would say, don't tell anybody about it. And of course, then that never worked. They told people about it, but he would instruct them, don't 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 tell anybody about this. Even even when he was interacting with demons and binding them and casting them out, he instructed them uh, to tell no one. If Jesus knew it wasn't time for the big reveal, okay, it's here. This is day one of God's big reveal. This is where God says to the world, "This man, Jesus, is God in the flesh, and he has come for one purpose. And he's come for one purpose only." He truly is the Messiah, the fulfillment of all the Old Testament prophecies that the Jews have looked at and prayed about and meditated and longed for for centuries. Here is the fulfillment of that great Old Testament promise. And then the amazing thing was that this promised Messiah, Jesus, would not only be for the Jewish people, would be for the whole world, for whosoever believes in his name, would not perish, but have, have everlasting life. So there's that one thought, that this was God's big reveal. Now it's official. He's putting it out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jesus, the one riding in Jerusalem, that's my son. That's me in the flesh. And he is here to do my purpose and to accomplish my will. It's an incredible, incredible day. Um, at the same time, you got to hang with me on this, on that idea of the big reveal. It hadn't been that long ago, maybe a week, two weeks ago, before I was even working on this. Uh, I, I wasted maybe three really good minutes of one of my days um, because somebody had uh, tagged on one of their social media um, posts a video of Reveal Fails. Yeah. And I thought, oh, I got to see this. And so it was, it was, I don't know, a collection of 10 or 12, 15 times where the big reveal didn't go the way it was supposed to go. Uh, when people were disappointed in, in you know, the, the pinata wouldn't bust or um, the, the softball that was supposed to be hit, it was a strike instead of a hit. I mean, just all these little things. But the, the most interesting ones to me were the, the, um, the reveal fails where there was a little brother or a little sister involved. And they're so excited, and they're waiting to see, is it, am I going to get a baby brother or a baby sister? And it's amazing how many times, like if it was, if, if, if it was blue, if it was a blue cupcake, the, 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 the brother or sister would just start crying. I mean, almost angry. That's not what I wanted. I wanted a girl. I wanted a And they go stomping off. 
And it's like, wow, they, they, they don't like what was revealed. They don't like what's being put in front of them. The reveal fails. And one of the things that we learn about Palm Sunday as we study through the rest of the week leading up to Easter, which we'll celebrate next Sunday morning, and we're going to kind of look at the week, midweek on Wednesday night uh, of, of, of this week uh, in our broadcast. One of the things I, I see is that uh, a lot of people didn't like God's big reveal. They got kind of upset with it. They kind of threw uh, a bit of a temper tantrum, <laughs> a big temper tantrum, because it led to the crucifixion of Christ. So let me put it this way. Let me talk about this for just a minute. Christ revealed himself as the Messiah when he came in to Jerusalem. He was fulfilling God's purpose for his earthly life. And so really there were two groups of people there that day. There were the religious, uh, the religious elite, the keepers of the laws of Judaism, uh, the keepers of the established way. And immediately as Christ came in and he was being announced as uh, the son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna, uh, in the highest heaven. The religious people, the religious leaders, the ones who uh, held the ropes of authority in Judaism, they didn't like that reveal. They didn't like Christ just so blatantly proclaimed, being proclaimed as the Messiah. Because, you see, if Christ was really the Messiah, he was going to be a threat to how they did things. You know, if I'm, if I'm in a position of authority and power in my religious structure and then someone comes along claiming to be greater than me, then, then I've, I've got a problem. Kind of, like, kind of like the kings when the baby Jesus was born. And, 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 and the king said, oh, I can't have this. And so he tried to kill all the, the babies two years and younger to try to get rid of this newborn king of the Jews. In a little simpler way, I think it um, Palm Sunday uh, reveals, as we look at the Messiah, it reveals that sometimes uh, people are, 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 are more satisfied with religious ritual than they are with an intimate relationship with God. I, I know of people, I've run across them in my 37 years of ministry, who would much rather just go through the ritual of church stuff than to really experience the, the soul-bearing intimacy of a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And, uh, and so people who are more interested in maintaining religious rigidity are not really going to enjoy what Jesus comes to bring. And on the other hand, you had all the people who were in the crowd you had the religious people who were listening and watching from a distance and saying, this, this can't be good. But then you had the people in the crowd, okay? And, 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 and they wanted a Messiah, but they wanted a Messiah who was going to come in and throw the Romans out and set up an earthly kingdom. They, went, they weren't so much interested in, in salvation for eternity. They, wanted just, they, they were more interested in salvation from taxation. They just wanted the Romans out. And so what's the first thing Jesus does when he gets into Jerusalem? He goes into the temple and he, and he clears the tables out. I mean, he just, he lets it be known. I'm not here. I'm not here to lift up what's currently being done. I'm bringing something new. I'm, I'm bringing salvation, which brings you into relationship with your heavenly father. And what God wants to do is, is build his kingdom in you and through you, not establish an earthly kingdom. And the amazing thing is that all these people on Palm Sunday in the crowd who were cheering Jesus and lifting him up by Friday, they're so disappointed in the reveal that they're calling for the crucifixion of Christ. You see, the thing about Jesus is he invites us to follow him. It's a journey of faith. We, on the other hand, we want to kind of shape what it means to follow Jesus. We want to we want to attach our conditions to our surrender. And really there there we we don't have we don't have any leverage. <laughs> we don't get to negotiate. Jesus invites us to follow him. 
to just join him in this incredible adventure of faith. And we'll grow in it and we'll grow and he'll teach us and we'll mess up and he'll teach us and we'll find forgiveness. But to commit ourselves, our relationships, our families, our spouses, our vocations, whatever it is, to just really allowing him to shape our lives. How about you? If Palm Sunday is God's big reveal and he's saying, this is the Messiah. Okay, he's here for my purposes. And this is my purpose to give himself as a sacrifice to die on the cross, to be resurrected for the forgiveness of, of, of the sin of all who will receive him and surrender to him. And in your surrendering, there is no negotiation where you give yourself fully to this. That's the Messiah that God is revealing. And a lot of religious people even today don't like that Messiah. They just want to go to church. And then there are those who like the idea of that kind of Messiah, but they want a shaping and they want a controlling but this is the king of kings we're talking about. All we can do is, is bow our heads and surrender to him. Palm Sunday, God's big reveal. And so let me say this last thing and we're about done. Okay? God is revealing in Christ the only way to find mercy and grace. We can't earn it. We can't purchase it. We can't enter into a contract and say, God, if you'll give me some mercy and grace, I'll pay you back. I'll do so many good works that we'll be square on this thing. No, no. Um, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man, there's no way to come to the Father except by me. And, um, and so on Palm Sunday, we see God bringing the offering that would become the sacrifice to pay the penalty for the sin of all humanity. So my question for you today is, have you received that? Have you surrendered to the Messiahship of Christ? On this Palm Sunday, are, are you more like the Pharisees who are kind of threatened by the authority of Christ? Are you like the people in the crowd that are like, you know, as long as, um, as, long as following Christ is going to put more money in my bank account, I'm there. As long as following Christ means I'll never have a difficult time, I'm there. As long as following Christ means I'm protected from this virus, I'm there. No, no, no. It's, it's about following Christ because he is who he says he is. The Son of God come to make a way for us. So here's what I want to do in response, okay? you got to think through some of that stuff and in your quiet time this week. I hope you'll pray with it. And I, I know our, our, uh, it's about time to get done. But I want us to respond today on this beginning of the Passion Week with Palm Sunday. I want us as a church, those, as many of you as well, I just, I, I, everybody, I hope you'll come in and be a part of this. Um, and you, you, can, you can get this done today. This would be a great project for today. Um, as soon as we're through with church this morning and maybe you eat some lunch or whatever you're going to do, I want all of us to, in, in our homes, I want us all to build a cross, okay? Now, uh, you can build that cross out of, of any kind of material. It needs to be something that you can put outside so that, you know, not not, not something that the, the water would, would mess up or whatnot. But whether it's uh, pieces of um, cut lumber, whether it's tearing branches off of trees and, and using ropes to tie them together, it doesn't matter if it's fancy or finished or perfectly proportioned, but it needs to be large enough that you can display it somewhere in your front yard, maybe uh, uh, attached to a tree or, or, or dig a little hole and put it in the ground. But I want us all to build a cross, okay, that we can put in our front yard during this week of uh, leading up to Easter. And, and so you can get the kids involved if it's just you and your spouse or if you're just by yourself. And if, if, if you're not able to build a cross, you call the church office tomorrow and we'll, we'll, we'll build one for you and bring it by. But then after you build the cross, I, I need you to scrounge around. I'll go shopping if you can help it. Scrounge around. I need you to find a purple piece of cloth a black piece of cloth, and a white piece of cloth. And you've seen these crosses usually at churches, uh, just like the one right up here at our church right now, it has a beautiful purple piece of cloth draped over it. And, um, and, and, and these are symbolic of what we're going through here during the Easter season. Uh, the purple cloth, and here's an example, for instance, of um, what I'm talking about. Here's a cross with a purple cloth on it. And this purple represents the royalty of Christ. It represents the reality of who Jesus is, the Son of God. And so what, what we're all going to do is many of us as well, we're going to put these crosses in our yard and we're going to find a purple 
or close to purple piece of cloth and have, there's not a there's not a certain length that has to be you know don't don't get caught up in does that have to be so long and is there a certain way it has to be draped you can, you can do that however i would advise you when you're putting your cloth out there to maybe figure out a way to secure it so the wind doesn't blow it off but we're going to put a purple cloth up there today and that's going to stay there till friday and it represents the the royalty of god the 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 reality of of god as our as our king of kings and then this is what's going to happen on friday you need to go out and you can do it as a family you can do it individually you need to go out and you need to um take off that purple cloth and put on the black i made the picture a little bit bigger here so you can see kind of how these people did it and that black cloth is a reminder that when christ was crucified on that friday all the sin of all humanity was placed on on his soul on his life as he became the 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 penalty he paid the price for our sin and the blackness the stain of all of all humanity fell on the perfect son of god and that black cloth will stay there all the way through sunday morning and then on sunday morning sometime before we gather together to celebrate easter and communion next sunday morning you need to go outside take that black cloth off and replace it with the white cloth that reminds us that Christ is resurrected. He has removed the stain of sin for all who come to him. So that's kind of um, that's kind of like our homework assignment related to today's broadcast is, is to make some crosses. We're going to put them in our yard and we're going to drape them with purple and then black on Friday and then white on resurrection Sunday morning. But this is what I want you to do, okay? When you've done that at any time, when you have that cross up, maybe you've got it draped with the purple or whenever you want to do it, I want you and your family to take a selfie, a picture uh, right there uh, at that cross, however you want to choose to do it. There's no, you know, just a, a picture of your family there at that cross in your yard and send it, text it to me or to Jeff. You can find our, um, you can find our numbers on our, on our, um, on our newsletter and also on our website, or you can call the church office if, if you need it. Text us those pictures, and we're going to put together a collage or several collages of those pictures as a part of our worship next Sunday. It's just a neat way for us all so that when we're riding around, we see a cross, uh, no matter how crude it is or how simple, we'll know, you know what, those are people who worship together. It's just a great way for us to respond. So there you go. Palm Sunday leading up to Easter. I look forward to next Sunday. I hope you'll be here. 